Some wage war for glory, others for honor. We wage war for pleasure, great pleasure. We can't wait to start! <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to another look at Middle-earth Shadow of War. So I went hands-on with the game last week and played through a fort assault. And of course, for more, make sure you like and subscribe to GameSpot. But here, I'm going to talk you through what I played. So, this is our army, and the benefits to having your own army is that they can give you things uh, that you can take into battle. So, you can have mounted cavalry, or you can have uh, fire drakes that you can ride. But similarly, these strongholds have defenses that you have to get past, so you have to sort of balance what you bring compared to what you're going to be up against. And here you get this nice little preamble where you can talk with uh, talk with you guys. You know, they've been with you through thick and thin and sometimes they'll remember old battles or if you've saved them, for example, they'll remember this and they'll be more than willing to fight for you. Um, we can see here there's like a fiery drake. You can just sort of see him around that tower flying around. So if you take one of those into the battle, they will indiscriminately fire fire um, at either your troops or the enemy troops. So what you have to do is sort of wait until the health has been whittled down and then you can go in and dominate it. So it's kind of like a risk reward thing, but I think it was so cool because it gives you not only this amazing tactical view of the battlefield, but the like some really strong firepower. And that was an unintentional pun right there. But here on the ground, so what you have to do as Talion to capture the fort, you and your troops have to capture three sort of key locations, three key points, which is kind of nice and gives it some direction, I guess. It's not just you going, making a straight beeline for the boss. It's you sort of taking control of the whole thing and clearing out the bad guys. So if you take your army in, what I think is really cool is that you can actually take a step back and let them do a hell of a lot of damage by themselves. They can go in and they can, as you can see here, take on another warlord, a war chief, and just completely take them out for you. So if you are more interested in doing other things, like you can go around and collect all your loot, capture points, your guys can thin the herd for you. I love that guy is enraged by acrobatics because who isn't? So remember in Shadow of Mordor, if you downed a war chief, you would get a rune that you would add to your sword. This time it's more like legendary items. It's much more of a robust RPG system and some of them offer really, really cool perks. When I played this, I actually unlocked a purple, like a legendary item, which was super cool. And then I was really sad because it's not going to carry over into my final game. But what you can do is you can gather sets and you can just become this unstoppable half man, half wraith, orc killing machine. So we're finally at the boss now and to take to get all the way to him can take anywhere from like 5, 10, 15 minutes, depending on how you play, how many guys you want to take out. And what you can notice here is that the attacks are a lot more elemental. So previously in Shadow of Mordor, if uh, you were to use like a Wraith stun or a shadow, or like a Wraith, um, like a ground pound thing, it would be kind of like a shadowy look that looked a lot like uh, Celebrimbor. But now it's like if you pound the ground, it's fire and they get a burning status effect. Or if you stun them, it's, it's freezing and you can actually see like the ice chipping off them, which I think is really cool. And it makes it look a lot more distinct. Um, I think that was an issue I had in the first game is that whenever Celebrimbor came out, you weren't really... There was a lot going on. Another look, like a little improvements to the game that they've made here and there. So you don't have to tap R1 or right bumper to pick up Elf Shot anymore. You can just wander over it. So that really, really makes a difference in the game, which like I'm playing it again at the minute and tapping R1 to pick up stuff is super annoying. It won't be any good without your innards decorating it anyway. So you can see here that we've taken the fort and it's ours now. And what you can do is you can uh, promote one of your own war chiefs to hold it for you. Um, you might notice that it's not really got a lot for the sneaky players, but we did ask Monolith Bob Roberts about that, and he was saying that if you're a sneaky player, you can prepare. So you can sort of infiltrate the fort before you make your assault, and you can set up traps and turn enemies to your side before you even go in. So it's quite a cool balance. Sadly, I didn't have time to do that for myself, but I can see myself playing like that because otherwise it's just, you know, like 
manic sword on sword action. Overall, there's a ton of little improvements like the uh, like the elf shot thing I just mentioned. Combat feels nice, it feels fluid. I'm excited to see more. They're gonna have some big announcements at E3. So for more on Shadow of War, make sure you stay tuned to GameSpot.